six to eight weeks is uh, that's about se- regular season ending at least, and and that's what's um, ahead for for Elijah Mitchell. Honestly, by the time you know you could make the Super Bowl, it's basically you miss every game until the Super Bowl, and who even knows by then, right? I mean, that's if it's eight weeks. That's to me, he's gone. Uh, I, I think on just an individual note, it, it really, really sucks. Right, because we talked about this the other night. He's a fantastic player, and I think part of like any time that you find a guy that late in the draft that 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 is that good, it feels even more special. Like it's one thing, like you, you draft Nick Bosa really high, or even Debo and IU. Like you, <laughs> you allocated a lot of resource to acquire those guys. Trade for Jimmy, second round pick, pay him 120 million. Like the expectations are pretty high. When you get a guy in the sixth round who immediately becomes your starter at a position on on a with a head coach and an offense that, that is that important. If they knew this, do you think they trade Jeff Wilson Jr. to the Dolphins? If no. They knew, if I told Kyle that in a couple you? weeks, if you told Jeff, because you would say Jeff, getting rid of that Miami game, uh, Christian's going to be dinged up and Elijah Mitchell's going to be out. But when they made that trade, right, they knew that they Christian McCaffrey has a history of being hurt, and Elijah Moore or Elijah Mitchell just came back from a torn MCL. On a, in a previous season as a rookie, missed substantial time as well. So it's like you couldn't just go, well, I feel pretty good about these durable assets. You know, I mean, they they missed time. Well, I knew that. Well, they, they had to know that. They just took the calculated risk. Yeah. And I think now is the question is, does the calculated risk blow up in their face? Because um, it, I know they're downplaying it. I To me, the knee issue with Christian McCaffrey is not something like, oh, it doesn't sound like a big deal to me. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what? I'd rather just have, you know, Debo's dealing with a quad contusion. A helmet hits him in the quad. It's black and white. Like, wh- what is knee irritation? What, does he have like an itch? <laughs> I mean, what, what the fuck is that? We all follow sports long enough to know there are a lot of just pretty specific things. Tight quad, tight calf to the big things. The ACLs, the UCLs, the labrums. I'd say this one's pretty unique. Even kid laws, like, you know, he's got the, the swelling and pain doesn't go away. I think, well, his knee might not work. This one, it's, what does this mean? Is it tight? Is it painful? Is it, does it feel like it's going to tear? So he's hesitant like he did on that last one. Is it stiff? Because we know Mitchell's gone now. To me, the question is with McCaffrey, does he... Is he 100% movement-wise and just hopes it doesn't come up? Is it one of those things like arthritis? Is it kind of hit or miss? Is it, again, an itch? <laughs> what is it? Because even right when they came to the game on Sunday and the and the Fox camera goes, well, because Mason was in the game, we're like, well, where's Christian? It's like, well, he's got something on his knee. But they didn't even, they didn't even know how to explain it, right? He was playing. It's not like he wasn't playing. He was playing. Kind of. Not yes, very uncomfortably, which, which is, is another which, thing, right? which is very concerning for a guy who I would say makes his makes his living making guys miss and cutting. Like that's a huge part of McCaffrey's game, right? He's, he's cutting. And, yeah, yeah. And at two point nine or whatever yards per carry he was, while he wasn't very impactful in the run game, and I mentioned it the other day. I, he's still very impactful a couple times a game, just at minimum as a safety valve for Garoppolo, right? He knows where to be. He can catch. He's, he's a major part of the 49ers passing offense. And it's one thing for him to be hurt. You'd prefer that he's available than hurt, obviously, but available, but unsure what you're getting for him. That's a tough way to operate too. You step onto the field every day going, well, should we have activated Tevin Coleman or not? Like, is Christian going to be unavailable in the third and fourth quarters and we're out there with just Buck Mason? You know, it's hard to manage a game when you go into the game not knowing if you're going to – when your rosters are so small. Like, what am I getting? Am I getting four quarters of football today because I need it? And if I'm not going to get it, then I got to get Tevin Coleman on the field instead. Right? Well, I think, I, I think tomorrow and Thursday are pretty big. Does he not practice? Because I think if Christian McCaffrey is not practicing, it might be fair to assume he might not play this week. If he's a limited participant, Debo was last week, no problem. Just ease him in, take it easy. He's a veteran player. Even though, unlike Debo, he's new to the operation, but clearly he's Stanford guy, figured it all out. 
if he's just not practicing, I would be like, well, they'll probably elevate, you know, Coleman, or maybe they feel good about Ty Davis price and they'll just also rotate. And this is, you know, I hold my breath when he gets in these collisions. Is I, I would imagine that 19 gets a lot more carries. Who and gets it, in the collisions? Debo? Debo, yeah. Because he gets in some ones where he gets bent back. Sometimes he can just get in some weird collisions. Because he, he's got a little Tyreek, Barry Sanders in him where it's like, I can make these seven guys miss. It's like, oh, Debo, just, get on, just hit the ground. Well, the other thing is Debo's not available 100% of the time right now. Right? Like Debo's coming off the field pretty consistently to like, whatever, I don't know, get some work on his hammy or his calf or... Right, the Mexico game, they're hammering out his calf with the Thera gun. This last week, he's whatever was going on with him while he was laying in the back of the end zone. Rode so the bike, like, rode the bike on the side. Yes, yeah, like you can just look up. It's third and one, and you know you're you're in four down territory. It's a tie game, two minutes left, and like Debo just got helped off the field. Yeah. No one's questioning him. He's a war daddy, but you gotta you can run out of balance really quickly um, if your guys are not available now you know the good news is buck mason looked good the other day see to me this is where i need like we can ride other guys kittle juwan jennings and those two guys catch the ball much closer to the line of scrimmage than brandon Ayuk, let's say and you can utilize those guys in high percentage passing because like you said the way to combat and neutralize a high powered offense even if you have an elite defense it's just to keep them off the field, control the clock. How about feed Kittle about seven, eight times? We'll give him seven, eight targets. Yeah, to me, Juwan Jennings clearly earned some more targets. He might drop some balls in, in training camp and every he does not. He got, didn't he get the most targets? Well, I'm just saying, like, keep feeding him the ball. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like they're feeding him the ball as much as they can at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, just keep – I'm cool. Just keep throwing the ball. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with, I mean, they threw the ball 37 – what, 37? Was that the number the other day? Yeah, it was high. It was. Um, and maybe they have to do it again. I, you know, in the end, I think there's going to be, there's diminishing returns on that one with Garoppolo. It, it but, is the one position where if you told me Mason has a hundred yard game in December, it's believable, right? It's just the position that an undrafted free agent could just become a starter and look very, very serviceable. Mm -hmm. Now, if he became the starter, if I would have told you this on the day they trade Jeff Wilson Jr. You know, there's a game where... Buck Mason ends up starting. I know his name's Jordan Mason, but Buck Mason was was a longtime um, advertiser. That's an inside joke for those of you who might be new to the oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you should say that. It's not, we're not like, yeah, we're not making fun of the guy. It's just that's what we thought about when we saw the guy's name. When they made the Jeff Wilson trade, you'd be like, well, that's a disaster because clearly the other two guys got hurt. And that's I, – I don't understand, and I know these guys say they can't become numb to it, and maybe they do, but I, again, I was only in the NFL for three years. I never became numb to injuries. It made me sick to my stomach, gave me anxiety. Because you know they're coming. You know they're coming. And a guy's when guys are laying on the ground, it's out of everyone's control. It's like, well, he could be completely fine, or he could be pull sick. He's headed to the hospital. I mean, there are some that you just know are devastating. But I, I would say the majority of injuries are just a kind of a guy lying there. You're like, was well, he okay? And yeah, and. All over football. Sometimes he gets up, shakes it off. It's like, he's going to be okay. He just kind of needs a breather. And sometimes like, that turns out to be a torn MCL, you know, or a broken hand. You remember the play a couple weeks ago when Greenlaw? And you're like, did he just break his wrist? I would say it was an innocuous hit, but it was just your classic punch out to the ball. But he kind of got it so flushed that it felt like it kind of jammed his wrist. You're like, oh my God. But it turns out he was fine. But for a split second, I thought, I think he just broke his wrist. It's part of the game. And I, they become numb to it. Coaches love saying, I, I just don't believe that. <laughs> you become numb to like random dude on special teams, whatever. It's another thing when the when you're a good team and the core group of your top 12-ish guys, or to me, when you make a trade, like you trade for Von Miller, you trade for Christian McCaffrey, you trade for whoever, that guy goes down, you, you want to throw up. I mean, we we went out of our way to trade future picks for this guy. And then he was everything we thought and more. And that's why I think McCaffrey, I think he feels so much obligation, right? He's been on the shitty team. These guys brought him out of football irrelevancy to football 
I wouldn't call it football heaven, but Valhalla. Running back, <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty important for his career just to get it back on track. And you could tell it, I ain't fucking leaving this game. And that's the balance of like, in, in a game, it's easier to like, yeah, I'll just got to see what he's got. And then clearly they yanked him out. To yeah. me, you have a week of practice. Like Christian doesn't get to go like, Guys, I'll figure it out. Like, no, man, you're not ready to, like, you're not going to be able to function. Because if you can't, if you're moving like you did on that last run play, you're hurting all of us. And we appreciate, here's the thing about McCaffrey. I think you and I text about it, or maybe we talked about it after the game. The night, we, we're not questioning any toughness on the team. Like, the, the toughness is established. Everyone's good. You play on this team, your toughness, you're on one of the tougher, more physical teams in the league. No one, you don't need to be a tough guy. Or some like the war daddy thing is established, but you have to be healthy to do that, you know? And so it's like part of it is we just need the physical element of a guy that can run fast, right? More than like you proven, like just laying on the line for us. Like, no, everyone, we got that pretty well covered here, <laughs> like all over all these positions. That's probably because I was thinking the other day, like, how did Ambry Thomas just disappear and, and Lenore just come up? I wonder if there's just like, Lenore just kept coming, kept coming, worked, 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 and just like this is our type guy over time, right? Yeah, had to be something, or maybe he's just just a simple black and white. He's just a better player. Yeah. Um, I I think with Christian, like it also hurt. Just one other thing you made me think, like when it when it really feels like a stomach punch when it happens at the same position, like at the same time, right? Well, they both happen really quick, right? At the they both happen really quick, and and winning games like. The one question with Christian is, or one of the questions with Christian is, would three weeks of rest fix this issue? And if so, can you win enough games that you can afford, you know, like, can you beat the Dolphins and be eight and four and then have a little cushion where you can rest Christian McCaffrey for a couple of weeks to get him ready for the postseason? Right. Well, that was my, that was my thought last week with Debo. Yeah. Just, but it's pretty clear. I you would said, say, you said, don't play him. And Kyle said, why don't we handle the ball three times on the first two possessions or whatever it was? I, in fairness to Kyle, I I would say Power Five and the NFL. You, that's just not a football thing. Yeah, you got to play. You might end up in a one. If you're close, like clearly Debo, there's a difference of like I can barely walk, right? And like Debo, you know my hammy's a little tight, but I can go. Clearly, he can manage it, right? To me, Debo felt like he was on a different level than Christian McCaffrey once the knee thing became a thing, right? Yeah, whatever Debo's dealing with feels like he's got at least a handle on it. Whereas the the knee for McCaffrey was like he did not trust. It felt like he didn't know what was happening and he didn't trust it. Debo did get a second injury also in the game, right? He got a thigh contusion. That's separate from the hamstring, so he's dealing with Except, which is fine. The t- thigh contusion you can live <laughs> yeah. with, right? I mean, I mean Jimmy's got some. I can live too. with him having a thigh contusion. Yeah, <laughs> for me, easy for me to say. Well, I always love it when yesterday I saw the quote of they asked Kyle like, "How's Jimmy doing?" He's like. Yeah, he's a little sore, but he's going to be fine. It's so easy. Like, yeah, he's sore as he like has a Diet Coke and like a sunflower seeds in his pocket. You know, he's Kyle's not alone. Like every coach says that. Like he's a little sore. There might be a chance like Jimmy's like, I'm in so much goddamn pain. Like obviously nothing's broke or whatever. But yeah. You guys have no, that's the worst Charlie horse you've ever felt. Multiply it by a thousand. Right. If Jimmy came in and was like, guys, I can't go Sunday. They'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's like, I'm just in a lot of pain. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs> 